Good morning. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Um, this morning I come to you, um, of course, to gather around this table and to share communion with you. This past weeks, of course, we've been apart, and we're looking forward to getting together next Sunday to worship together. But the past weeks, and especially this past week, it seems like uh, there's a lot of things happening in our country, in our world, things of unrest, socially, uh, medically, and civilly. And uh, to be honest with you, I look around and I, I, I watch the news and I listen to the radio, talk to people, and it's uh, unsettling to say the least when we see things happen in our country, it looks like a third world country in some some ways, and it's uh, distressing. And uh, I talked to a lot of people that, that, that are, they're stressed. And I always go back to the scripture, or I try to, uh, to get some semblance of where we should be and how we should act. In preparing for the meditation, of course, we have in the Gospels, the Last Supper, and we've all familiar with those scriptures in, in the Gospel that, that Jesus shared with the disciples and commanded us to meet together and to share in these symbols to represent his body and his blood that was broken and shed for us. But there's so much more into that that you, when you read it and you meditate on it. And what I'd like to talk to you about this morning with these things that go on, the constants in our life that, uh, that we've got to hold on to and understand what our, our role is in the world that we're living in and what as believers, as true believers in Christ and in God and the risen Christ, that we should play and that we should be. And the part that I'm going to pick this morning is unity, being unified. We as brothers and sisters in Christ understand that we as a unit together with God and with Christ are unified in our belief that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he came here as a man, as God, died on the cross for us, and rose on the third day. And as baptized believers, part of the new covenant that he talks about in the Last Supper with his disciples when he talks about the blood being poured out for the new covenant and that new covenant's an agreement between us and them more than an agreement it's promises god promised to send his son to make a way for us that that jesus was the lamb that was slain for us in order that our sins would be covered so we come this morning around this table humbled to say the least but we do sin um, all the time. So does that mean that we're not covered until we come around the Lord's table again for the next Sunday? It doesn't. Jesus Christ died on the cross to cover us. And he's our, he's the one that makes us presentable to God. As believers, even though we fail all the time, and I say that humbly and ashamed of myself at times, that uh, sin that is part of our lives. But because of that sacrifice, that love that God and the plan of salvation, we're made whole to God because of Jesus. That's the covenant. Now, our part of that is it doesn't give us a free reign just to sin and everything's okay. It means that as true believers, we belong to him totally. And what our job is, a job is a, a poor way of putting it. It's not a job, it's a privilege. But because of what he did and us being full believers, that means that we will carry his message wherever we go and that we believe different than the world does. And again, I go back to what's going on in our country. And I, I read this week and have for a while now this helps me and i hope it helps you in john chapter 17 beginning with verse 20 this is jesus before his arrest 
he prayed for his disciples. But in verse 20, it says Jesus prays for all believers. Verse 20, my prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are, are in me, I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, and they be one as we are one. In them and you and me, so that they may be brought to complete unity, then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even if, even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you love me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know you, you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them, that I may be itself may be in them. This is a prayer that Jesus had for us as believers, that we are one, we are unified with God, and with Christ. And the world can change, and the world only through us, through true belief and through our message and the privilege that we have to share it. So as we come around these tables and represent that covenant, that new covenant. I want you to think of this prayer. I want you to read chapter 17 in John. It's uh, very uh, encouraging. It's a promise and it's a prayer that Jesus had to God for us. So take refuge in it, understanding what role that we play. So as we partake of these emblems that represent his body and his blood that was broken, let's be unified in our belief and our love for each other and for mankind. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we humbly come to you, thanking you, God, for the plan of salvation, the perfect plan, the love that you have for us, sending your Son to die on the cross for us, and the victory over death, that no matter what this world deals out, the constants that we have in it is that you're in control and that you have us in our belief in you and sending your son that we are one. What can stand against us if we are one? The world may hate us. The world may disintegrate around us. But you will never change. And as we live on this earth that you give us a privilege to be, that we should share your love with each other. And in doing that, we know that you can change and others will come to know you. You can change anyone's lives. They can be saved. So in the civil unrest, the social unrest, all the things that we face, the change that happens will be through the love of Christ. And we thank you for that promise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.